Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for some more time in God's Word. Our shout out today goes to Jay Fair from Melbourne, Florida. Jay, thanks so much for your support and partnership in the gospel. I love you, man. I hope you appreciate this today. This is for you, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. Paul says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, not that there is another one. <laughs> That's a little uh, humor by Paul. But there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. So just the other day, I was outside in the front yard and heard a young father yelling a warning call to his three children who had strayed into a busy street. The call of this father sent a chill up my spine. It reminded me of when my children were young and I yelled at them when they were playing in the street and shouldn't be. And it was a little bit startling for me and totally appropriate. This father's only concern was the safety of his children who had ran into the street. And it's with that call that Paul begins this letter. Essentially, Paul says, what are you doing? As he screams at them, seeing that the churches in the region have, have strayed into a dangerous street. And this text here brings attention to a vital point in the spiritual journey. Sometimes we need someone to grab us by the face mask, look us straight in the eye and exclaim, what in the living world are you doing? Now, being on the other end of these moments is challenging, isn't it? But they are necessary sometimes, which means if you are a believer, you're going to have to learn how to give and receive it. And right here, Paul is giving it to the Galatians. But don't forget, he also received it one time. Jesus Christ himself got right in his grill on that Damascus road and dropped him to the ground and blinded him because he opposed the gospel. And here, over a decade later in this letter, He's doing the same, mainly because he's been there, dragged away into a very similar apostasy, believe it or not. Now, another word for apostasy is the word that Paul uses here, desertion or distortion. It is the act of deserting a belief that one previously held. But as we will see all the way through the end of this letter, the, their apostasy, was a desertion of addition, a desertion of addition. In other words, they had deserted the gospel by adding something to the gospel. So here's the equation I would present to you today. The gospel plus or minus, the gospel plus or minus anything is apostasy, plain and simple. And guess what? Apostasy happens every day. It's happening in churches, it's happening in colleges, of course, and in companies at an alarming rate. They add and subtract to the gospel to enhance it or to adjust it to make it more relevant. And many are dragged away from this and never return to the purity of the gospel alone. In fact, I bet you know someone right now who has been dragged away by some apostasy. Someone who has deserted the gospel by addition or subtraction, which is a, tra which is a tragic thing because the gospel is God's story. And guess what? His story doesn't need any help from us. We're the villains. He's the hero. It doesn't need our help. None. Zero. Nada. And given our current times, we should be testing everything we hear. We need to sharpen our senses when it comes to the gospel. We need to listen to teachings with more care. We must ensure that the gospel we believe is the untarnished story of God. This means we need to know the genuine gospel so, so well that we can recognize even the smallest alterations or deviations which prevent us from being swayed into dangerous situations and equips us to warn others against doing the same. So do that today. Know the gospel, live by it, and listen carefully for any addition or subtraction. I love you guys. I pray this has blessed you. If it has, share it with someone else. And I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.